It's been an exciting month in the world of satellite internet, and we've got updates from OneWeb, Amazon's Project Kuiper, and SpaceX's Starlink. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, here to share with you some uh, major updates over the past month in the world of satellite broadband internet, internet from space. Now, there are currently three major constellations that are in development that will completely revolutionize what satellite internet is all about. Instead of satellites out in geostationary orbit 26,000 miles over the equator with long, slow ping times that delay everything, so basically make the internet like running in molasses, these next generation const constellations are using low Earth orbit satellites that are just a few hundred miles above the Earth, zipping through the sky, um, thousands of them, and the potential for much faster speeds, much greater latency, lower latencies, and overall better performance, making satellite perform you know, in the same league as wired or 5G cellular or cable or anything else. So totally revolutionizes what is the potential for satellite internet. But the catch with these constellations is because the satellites are so low to the ground, it takes um, hundreds of them to be deployed before you can even start to turn on service. So it's a major project to get these networks off the ground. And well, there's give you an update on where three of them are at. First off, OneWeb. You know, OneWeb was the first of these big next generation constellations to really get started. But last year, well, this past year, 2020, has been a rough year for OneWeb. They started the year with uh, two successful launches, got a whole bunch of satellites up, and we're going gearing up to do monthly launches throughout the year. Um, and by about this time, they're going to be start rolling out service. But, well, a global pandemic hit, investors got spooked, and SpaceX's Starlink was ramping up so fast that OneWeb collapsed, went into bankruptcy last March, and looked like they were destined for, you know, to be sold off for parts. Um, until, well, a really strange turn of events and sequence and whatnot, the Royal, the, 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 the Queen of England basically stepped in. Her Majesty's government, going through Brexit, was going to be losing access to the European Galileo GPS constellation. They're going to be losing access to the military-grade GPS that they rely on. And somebody had the idea of, couldn't we piggyback some GPS payloads onto OneWeb? That turned into the UK government leaving a, leading a cons national international consortium to buy and salvage and basically restart OneWeb. And it's been an eight-month process of stasis, but the bankruptcy has been resolved, all the investors have been paid off, and all the fired employees have been rehired, the factory has been restarted, and OneWeb is back in business. And just this past Friday, they had their big return to flight launch, launching 36 satellites, um, starting to rebuild their constellation, uh, working towards now they have um, 110 satellites up there. They still have a long way to go to get to the 650 they need for global coverage, but they are back in the race saying that maybe by summer 2021, they will have service in northern latitudes, uh, Alaska, the UK, and by summer 2022, global coverage will be possible. So OneWeb is back. Does this mean they're, they're going to be a new major contender? Well, it also seems in the process of all this rethinking, OneWeb is now focusing on enterprise customers with bigger, deeper pockets. So perhaps OneWeb, at least for the time being, is not going to be making a play for general consumer satellite broadband. It's great to see them coming back, but they are stepping back because, well, SpaceX is so far ahead with Starlink focused on consumers, and, well, Amazon's got infinitely deep pro pockets and is coming along with Project Kuiper. So that's the update on OneWeb. They're back. It's fun to watch, but they're focused on enterprise for now and, well, whatever the UK government wants from them, the new boss. Next up, Amazon's Project Kuiper. This is Amazon's plan to build a massive multi-thousand satellite constellation to bring basically Alexa to every corner of the globe. So, you, you know, you'll, Amazon will have coverage everywhere. They'll be able to bring internet everywhere so you could shop everywhere and talk to Alexa everywhere. This is Amazon's big universal goal. They are putting in billions and billions of dollars into Project Kuiper, but they have so far, other than getting what they've had to 
share to get their FCC licenses and permission to start building this constellation, they have shared very, very little details. Until this past week, you know, basically right on top of uh, OneWeb getting back in business, uh, Amazon shared their first update on Kuiper in ages where they disclose the antenna technology they've been working on saying they have made a breakthrough in KA band antennas. Now we're talking about you know these satellites low earth orbit satellites they are moving rapidly through the sky and traditional dishes um, that you would use for a geostationary satellite those are old technology they are fixed pointing at one location in the sky and made out of fiberglass they're really cheap to build you know, even though they end up selling for relatively high amount. The kind of, of antennas you need to track satellites that are moving through the sky and then when one pops out of one end of the sky you've got to pick up the one coming in over here. You need digital sat digital satellite antennas. They're called phased array antennas that are digitally aimed and tracking. So basically no moving parts, just a flat surface that is digitally tracking and instantaneously re-aiming. That is basically military-grade technology. And up until now, it had military-grade pricing. So all these companies that want to bring these next-generation networks to more broader audiences have to solve the problem of making these antennas affordable. SpaceX has said this is their biggest challenge in the year ahead is driving down the costs of their antennas. And, well, that's, again, it's going to be Amazon's biggest challenge as well for the Project Kuiper. And Amazon says they have made a breakthrough it with a KA band antenna able to combine the transmission and receiving parts of the antenna using some very, very deep technical um, um, developments, overlay them so they can make an antenna as small as 12 inches across that is capable of speeds. They're sh they've demonstrated 400 megabits per second download speed to a tiny little 12 inch antenna that they're saying they're gearing up for um, uh, economies of scale to drive the costs way down and be able to affordably make millions and millions of these. How far is way down? Of course, Amazon is not saying. When is Project Kuiper going to actually launch? Amazon is not saying. All of this reveal on the antenna was to steal a little bit of OneWeb's thunder and also to try and lure more PhDs to come work with Amazon to help design and build um, Kuiper. So, that's the update from Amazon. Maybe in 2021 we'll learn more about when Kuiper will get off the ground. They have until 2026 before their FCC license expires to basically get half of their 3,000 satellites into orbit. So they've got a lot of work ahead of them, but it's all being done in secret right now. Always nice to get a little tip. Next up is... SpaceX. So Starlink has had a tremendous year. They have launched a ton of satellites. They are on a rapid pace and they have gotten to the point where they are able to actually start signing up customers, rolling out their um, public beta test earlier the, a month or so ago. And in January, they're going to be taking that to a much broader beta testing audience, uh, potentially all the way covering most of North, um, of most of the United States, except for the further southern parts of the country. So SpaceX is on a roll, but the other big reason that SpaceX was in such a rush to get Starlink out earlier this year was they were trying to qualify to participate in the FCC's Rural Development Opportunity Fund. This was a multi-billion dollar fund the FCC has to fund bringing broadband service to rural areas. Primarily, it is money that has been going to... Um, you know, the likes of you know cable companies to encourage them to expand their cable or fiber footprints or to wireless ISPs to put in gear to bring service to underserved rural areas. And just this past month, the FCC had kind of a special auction process where companies could bid on census tracts saying, we will bring service, we will promise to bring service to these tracts. And again, it's mostly cable companies and wireless ISPs and all sorts of traditional rural internet providers who participated. But SpaceX was qualified now and was the one satellite provider that was able to win big and will be getting now close to a billion dollars in FCC subsidy money paid out over the next 10 years to bring Starlink service to rural census tracts in 35 states. So this is a big boost of funds for Starlink, which is probably important. You know, we're talking about those antenna costs and, well, people say Starlink, they're selling an antenna for $499. That's so expensive. Analysts are saying the actual electronics in that cost over 2000 So Starlink could probably benefit from these uh, subsidies until they're able to drive their own costs down. 
And it might be that customers in these designated census tracts will be the first ones to get invited to the next round of Starlink beta and Starlink service because, well, there will be markets that they're less money losing for Starlink to invest in. Um, so lots happening, a lot's going to be happening going forward into 2021. We'll be seeing hopefully more from Project Kuiper. We'll be seeing launches from OneWeb. And, well, later in January, we'll probably be seeing the next big rollout from SpaceX and Starlink. So a lot to look forward to. There's also other really exciting space internet-related technologies in the works. We're starting to track a company called Space Mobile that has just signed a, uh, some contracts to start building a constellation that it will actually bring satellite internet to your regular existing 4G or 5G cell phone. They're going to be deploying antennas in space big enough that regular 5G phones, 4G phones, will be able to at the very least get slow speed internet and voice calls and text messages anywhere on Earth once this starts to roll out. And they apparently have contracts now in place um, for later in the decade, but uh, AT&T might be their first, one of their first customers in North America. So there's a lot of cool stuff happening on the space internet front. We'll be tracking it all here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. So um, here's looking forward to 2021. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.